Hi, my name is Chris, and I just can't stop making things. Today I'm going to see if I can make a surfable surfboard from an old hot tub cover, some curtains, and a whole lot of wood glue. It's a technique called poor man's fiberglass. If you don't know much about me, I used to live in Australia and loved surfing. Often for my birthday, I would get a bunch of surf craft from the garbage and a bunch of friends and try and surf them. It became affectionately known as the garbage surf. But now I'm back in the middle of Canada, which doesn't have a lot of oceans. There is one big lake near where I live though that, if it gets windy enough, might produce some small terrible waves that I could surf on. And that's enough for me to try and make my own surfboard from garbage. So I grabbed some foam from an old hot tub cover I had stashed away. It was really compressed in the center, but that's okay, cause surfboards need to be curved anyway. I needed to make it as thick and wide as possible to have any chance on the tiny waves I was planning to surf. Also, the thicker it is, the stronger it's gonna be. And because I have no experience with poor man's fiberglass, I'm gonna take as much strength as I can get. However, I also needed to be able to paddle it, so I did some scientific testing. <laughs> Super awkward. <laughs> So but if you were knee paddling. Good, good point. Yeah, I could do that. 26 and a half. I'd say that's near maximum. Surfing. <laughs> so, 26 and a half. It's funny how I could only think um, inches for surfboards even though everything else I do is metric. <laughs> you realize what this means, Lorinda? What? It means that once this board is made, as soon as it's really windy, coming from the no. right direction, we have to pack up and go to the lake. Yeah. With my dimensions figured out, I grabbed a free trial copy of Akushaper's surfboard designing software, and I designed the profile and top views for my board which meant all I had to do was print out a whole bunch of pages and tape them meticulously together to create my templates. I marked the center line on my foam and cut it with a circular saw. Of course it was thicker than my saw could cut so I had to finish it with a regular hand saw. I then used a piece of sandpaper to try get everything nice and flat and square along that center cut, which is really important and really hard. And even though I tried, I still didn't do the best job in the world. I traced my center stringer template on a piece of quarter inch plywood, left over from the wood I got angry with when I made my plywood canoe. I got out my jigsaw and cut along the lines, sanded the edge for smoothness and checked to make sure it still fit on my foam. I spread on some polyurethane glue and clamped it as tightly as I could. Unfortunately I don't think I put quite enough glue on so I kind of tried to squeeze some in at the end. Eventually I had used up every clamping device I had and I still could have used more. I left it overnight and in the morning I had a stringer glued to one half of my surfboard. It seems to be stuck on okay so that is a relief. I wasn't sure if it was going to be okay or not. This is going to be a funny looking board. I cleaned up my workspace and set up to glue the other half. This time I took the cap off the glue bottle so I could spread it on a little thicker and faster. You'll also notice I'm using some boards on each outside edge to protect the foam from crushing when I clamp it. I left it overnight and voila! Surfboard blank! There were still a few gaps from my non-straight cutting, but I'll deal with them once the blank is shaped. Which I would need to do on some stands, made out of wood. And a bucket, filled with rocks to keep the wood in place. And maybe a shovel for shoveling. A bit of foam on top, staple, staple. And that is some high-tech surfboard stand making. And then it was time to shape a surfboard. I won't really go into how I shaped my surfboard because I don't really know what I'm doing and there's lots of other places that I'm sure you could find that out. I did try and keep as much volume in the board as possible without it looking too ridiculous. In the end I had a board that looked not bad. I also had a lot of foam dust, pretty much everywhere. Remember how there was a gap when I glued up the stringer? Well, I had to fill it with something, and though it kind of felt like cheating to use epoxy, 
I just couldn't think of anything else that would fill up that gap properly. So yeah, I filled it with epoxy mixed with some 3M bubbles. I felt like it was really important to get that gap filled, because otherwise when the board heats up, the air trapped in there will expand and probably cause the poor man's fiberglass to delaminate. I also tried mixing some dollar store variety 5 minute epoxy with foam dust from shaping to fill some of the holes. It worked okay, not great, but it did work. Then I grabbed a big old vat of Type Bond 2 wood glue, and I mixed it 50-50 with water. I painted the whole board with this mixture so it would soak into the foam and dry, giving me a tougher surface that I can sand smooth without damaging the foam. Next I grabbed some sanding dust I saved, did some sweet sifting moves, and added some of my 50-50 glue mix to make it into a paste. Using a gift card I smeared it as thin as possible on the board, just to fill all the little craters left around the beads of EPS foam. I wasn't sure how well this was going to work or how long it was going to take, but it actually worked out pretty good. I found the consistency of the paste was really important, because if it gets too thick it gets hard to spread. I also tried making a paste with some of my 3M bubbles, and that worked even better. By the time I was done, my board looked like it was really old and had been sitting out in the sun for years. An antique. I let that dry and then gave a second coat to anywhere that still needed it. I did everything in thin layers because this glue needs exposure to the air to dry. If it's too thick, it won't dry underneath the top surface. And then a bit of sanding to make it all smooth. In case you're wondering, at this point my board weighed about 6 pounds and some number of ounces. I then went and found some old curtains and spread them out nicely on the board, like a tablecloth. I did a rough trim around the edges, folded half of the curtain back, and did some glue spreading. This is using full strength Type Bond 2 glue with no water added. It's also after I already did this on the top half of the surfboard, but my camera forgot to record it. Once my glue was nicely spread, I could lay the cloth back down and smooth it out with my gift card. I'm using a fairly firm pressure here to try and force the glue into the fabric as much as possible. Once everything was nice and smooth on top of the board, I cut the cloth along the rails so it hung a bit below the center line. Then I used a paintbrush to apply more glue and make sure the cloth was stuck down really well around the rails. The only place I had to cut the fabric to avoid lumps was at the very point of the nose. I let that all dry and then spread on another layer of Type Bond 2 to thoroughly saturate the fabric. Once that was dry, I tried to get rid of the ridge caused by the edge of the fabric. First with a super sharp scalpel and then with some sandpaper. Then I repeated the exact same process on the bottom of the board, just using some different fabric that I had found in my fabric box. Now might be a good time to mention that I'm using Type Bond 2 because it's a bit different from regular wood glue. It's rated as water resistant, so it will be less affected if water gets through the paint layer and into the glue. So why not use Type Bond 3? Well apparently it doesn't stick to itself as well, and since I'm doing multiple layers of glue, that's kind of important. I also figured I should maybe give a second layer on the top where my feet are going to be, so I did that too. And once that was all dry, I gave one more final layer of glue on both the top and the bottom. So if you're counting along at home, that's two layers of glue per layer of fabric, and one last gluey layer to finish it off. And I ended up with this. Weighing in at 10 pounds something ounces. I trimmed around the edges of the fabric, and because I'm a bit pedantic about smoothness, I mixed up a glue bubble paste and applied it anywhere that I didn't like how smooth it was. And once that was dry, I could sand it nice and smooth. I cut out a hole for my fin box, which I 3D printed, and then realized I had a bit of a problem. That's gonna snap or something terrible. Okay, so this is kind of lame, because it looks like this is not gonna be strong enough because I basically just cut away half the stringer, which is what's stiffening it. So I'm gonna have to, I think I'm gonna have to use epoxy. It wasn't my original plan, but I don't think the poor man's fiberglass would add enough strength back to where I had just cut away the stringer. I hot glued a couple tabs on so it wouldn't fall too far into the hole, and then mixed up some epoxy. I mixed it with cotton fibers for a bit of extra strength. Poured it in, and then squooshed down the fin box. A bit of tape and a square to make sure that it's square. And once that was cured I mixed a little more epoxy and filled the gap to the top. 
And once that was cured, I could pull off the green tape, making a little bit of a mess of things, but I got it done. And I also did a pretty good job of sticking down that piece of wood too, so yeah, that was fun. Sanding. I also 3D printed a leash plug, making the pin out of a piece of brass wire that I heated up and pushed through the hole. I used the same process for installation, just that it's small and round instead of long and rectangular. Once that was all cured, I gave the whole board a light sanding and wiped off the sanding dust with a dog shirt. I found a rusty old can of exterior paint in the basement and decided to give that a go for sealing the board. I gave the whole board three coats of paint, sanding in between coats for maximum smoothness. And because a pure white board is purely boring, I gathered my creative team to design the graphics. Then it was just a matter of using the ancient skinny tape from wider tape technique combined with the more modern sticking tape to a surface technique. That gave me my waves and border, and I made my fish stencils with some self-adhesive shelf liner. Then I used my airbrush to paint a bunch of different colors in a bunch of different places. I swapped the inside of my fishes for the outside of my fishes and painted them too. The tape comes off, a little more paint goes on, and a final coat of Pledge Floor Gloss to shine it up. All that was left was to 3D print a fin, make some surf wax, and go for a surf. There's a place I have found in the shade on the ground Far from a worries and troubling sound When I go there to be by myself only me No one can guess what I came there to see There's a sun in the sky There's a cloud drifting by All kinds of birds make you wish you could fly And in the distance I see Someone waving at me I hope that it's you But who else could it be? Okay, those weren't the greatest waves in the world, but I had a hoot because I was surfing on a lake in the middle of the prairies on a board I made with stuff mostly from my garage. And I was a bit desperate. So does poor man's fiberglass work for making a surfboard? I would say 70%-ish, yes, ish. The good things about this technique are the materials are really easy to access. Tight bond to glue is non-toxic, so you don't have to worry quite as much about fumes and dust. It's also water-based, so cleanup is really easy, just water. <laughs> and because Type Bond 2 dries with evaporation, you have a longer time to like mess around with stuff while you're painting the glue on and stuff, uh, which does also mean you have to wait more in between layers, so you know. And you can't do thick coats because you don't want a layer that's dry on top and then the bottom layer can't dry. So you need to do thin coats. So I guess now we're on to downsides. I'd say the biggest downside to the poor man's fiberglass is going to be its strength. Obviously, traditional materials have been t tested for their strength weight ratio and they're strong and light. This glue is made to glue like chairs together. So it doesn't have the same properties. The Type Bond 2 doesn't get hard, like it doesn't get brittle hard. It stays kind of flexible. So that board had a lot of flex in it, way more than I was comfortable with. And that's even with making it as thick as I could. To be honest, I was kind of expecting the first time I stood up on that board for it just to snap in half and 
and video there. That's why I let the kids go on it first, just in case it snapped when I went on it. However, we actually used it for probably five hours and we weren't being gentle with it at all. And it stood up pretty good. There's a little spot on the bottom where it looks like the poor man's fiberglass creased or something. And I just put a piece of tape over that so no water would get in. You can also see the top surface now is really wavy bumpy from us standing on it. Um, and I don't know if I had used like say XPS foam, the pink or blue stuff you can get for insulating houses, whether that would um, have not done that because it seems like a bit of a harder foam than this EPS foam I used. All I know is it looks like a board that has a thin glass layer that's been used for a couple of years and has all those indentations on it. So I guess it's good for making a board that looks old right from the beginning. The other problem I ran into is I left the board right side up in the sun for a while and there were areas that started bubbling up because the air inside the board expanded and so it pushed out and anywhere that the poor man's fiberglass obviously wasn't sticking very well, it left a bump of air. So I'm not sure if that's a foam problem, that that's inherent to EPS foam, or if it's a poor man's fiberglass problem if maybe I didn't have enough saturation in the material so it didn't soak into the foam and the material quite well enough and it was a bit of a dry bond there, I'm not sure. Because I did notice that after I painted the glue on the foam and put the fabric on, the fabric kind of soaked up the glue and so then maybe there wasn't as much glue actually in the foam. So maybe I should have thinned that first layer out a little bit so there would have been good contact. I don't really know. Because it's my first time. All in all, I was really happy with how this turned out. Yeah, it's not a professional surfboard. It's not super strong. I don't know how long it's gonna last, but I made it with stuff that I just had in my garage, plus a $65 bottle of glue, which I have about that much left. So that's probably $55 worth of glue or something. And if you haven't noticed, this is the first video of my brand new second channel, Lost Wax 2. Pretty original. It's just gonna be videos for projects I do that aren't related to costume making because I do lots of other things that I just want to share with people. But if I put them on my regular channel, it's actually not good for my channel because of YouTube's algorithms and stuff. So yeah, if you like this video and want to see other random things I'm doing, make sure to click the subscribe button and the bell because I probably am going to only release one or two videos a year and you'll likely miss them if you don't have that bell clicked. All right. Thanks for watching. See ya. Myself, only me. No one can guess what I came there to see.